you know, started the Locker Room podcast, what, five, six years ago? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, talk me through the decision to, to start the podcast. So I've always been a very tech-savvy person in the sense of, like, I love computers, I love internet culture, um, I used to love gaming. And so I've always been aware of kind of the latest trends in technology or whatever. Um, and podcasts, I don't know how I stumbled along Joe Rogan's podcast, but this was like six years ago, stumbled along it. Um, before that actually, before podcasts even existed, 2012, I was in the process of setting up a like a video game news show, you know, where I would like talk about video game news. <laughs> That's fucking funny, <laughs> eh? <laughs> what a fucking I idiot. Imagine you did that. Oh, bro. Oh, you know how big I'd be now though? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine how big I'd be now. Yeah. It's 2012 yeah, yeah, yeah. and I can I can talk and whatever. I know heaps yeah. about video games. I, know, yeah. I still know heaps about video games. Gaming's massive. Yeah. Gaming's huge. It's the biggest yeah. entertainment industry in the world. As a matter of fact, it's as big as movies and I think like print combined. <laughs> Um, and so I actually, I was really keen on it, like really, this is how keen I was on it. Like there was a part of me that was like, like I, she doesn't know this, but I was part of me because I was in such a bad relationship. I was going to literally sell my house at the time, hope that I could get together maybe 20 to 30 grand, yep. break up with the missus and move over to South Korea um, just to experience like the, wow. that culture and everything like that. And just, I, I didn't tell anyone, I wasn't going to tell anyone, I was just going to do it. Um, never did it, obviously. Um, and then with the, sh the video game show, like I was like, man, I've got to focus on footy because I was still trying to focus on this was before, might have been mid 2011 because this was before I went to the Dragons. Um, and, and then my you know mental health just continued spiraling. 2012 was probably my worst year mental health wise. Yep. Um, anyway, so I'd always kind of loved the idea of having a show or talking about things on the internet. Um, and then the Joe Rogan Experience um, podcast, I stumbled upon, upon that. And I used to work like, really long days in the above ground mines where I'd put my hard hat on and have my beanie and then I'd have wireless headphones hidden there and I'd go to these monotonous as tasks. Like usually if you didn't have music or, or things to listen to, you just head is off. Like I can't believe how people do it. Yep. And I would just listen to podcasts all day, just all day. So, so much so that I don't listen to Joe Rogan anymore. Yep. Um, I haven't listened to him for years because like I've, I've kind of heard everything he has to say. Um, not, not everything he has to say, but like it just – you just heard it. Yep, yep. Um, anyway, so yeah, I was like, man, I'd love to start my own. Initially, it was going to be like, you know, just interview anyone about stories. And then I was like, well, that's, then I've got to compete with the world. Like if I'm just interviewing anyone about stories, that's, the whole world is my competitor. Whereas like rugby league, no one's doing it in rugby league. And you know rugby league. And I know rugby league. And also I have that inherent respect because I played rugby league. Yep. And I know some of the boys as well. So I was like, why don't I give people an insight into who they are as people? Because like they get so unfairly maligned. Not like they're the most oppressed people ever or anything like that. But this is a huge thing in rugby. There's a, rugby league is a huge part of Australian culture. And there was a huge misunderstanding of the people that did it. Yep. And so I just was like, I want to give the community that loves rugby league an opportunity to see these guys as they are as people and just break down the stigma and the... Because the power back then wasn't in the players hands the media could create whatever narrative they wanted whether it be good or bad you know i've said this a few times but how much do medias if you could say take someone's name let's just take um i don't know andrew Fafita. how much money has the media made off putting his name in a headline how much revenue has been generated that's all well and good when they're building up his profile yep. that's great but then how much money do they make they make the same amount of money when they're building up their, his profile as when they're destroying his profile, yep. his his value goes down when they write a negative article that isn't true. Their value continues to go up. So he's actually, not only are they making money off his brand, he's losing money because his, his um, personal brand is taking a hit. Yep, yep, yep. And so I was like, this is just unfair. Like, how is that fair? Like, fair enough if, if, if they're using his name to build it up, mm. but where's the responsibility if they're tearing him down with a fake story? It's different if he did something wrong and they've got to write about it. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to give people an insight into these people, like players as people. 